There's been a lot of controversy over the pro-life movie Unplanned after some U.S. theaters balked at actually showing it, as did almost all Canadian theaters. It's finally being shown here in Canada, including here in Lethbridge at the Movie Mill, and most nights it is sold out. The film is based on the real-life story of Abby Johnson, a former Planned Parenthood clinic director who's now very much pro-life. Abby joins me now from Texas. Abby, welcome to Bridge City News. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. So what's it like to have so much of your personal life on the big screen for people to watch that either praise or criticize you? Yeah, you know, it's it's a little vulnerable, but um, I think especially the, the criticism makes you feel a little vulnerable. But, um, you know, we feel really confident that this was the right decision, making the film really, you know, just getting the conversation going again, getting people talking about abortion. I think in Canada for a long time, the idea has just been, well, this matter is settled and it's settled with our government. And so there's really no reason to discuss it anymore. And, you know, we're putting it back on the table. And I think that it's important for us to have these hard conversations. Now, when a production company makes a movie based on a true story, often there's a certain degree of artistic liberty that's applied to it. How true is your personal story in the movie Unplanned? You know, all of the important parts are, are completely accurate. Um, you know, they had to combine a few characters just so that they didn't have a million different characters and, and confuse the audience. But um, the actual, you know, the ultrasound guided abortion, the things that happened inside of the clinic, um, the push for abortion, all of those scenes that you see with me and my story, all of those different things, those are all 100% accurate. I wanted to make sure when we did this film that it wasn't just simply inspired by a true story, but that it was actually my true story. So what kind of feedback are you receiving? Is the movie having an impact? Are people actually changing their minds when it comes to abortion? A lot of people are, you know, it's been interesting. Of course, you know, the pro-life movement is going to see it and uh, the good thing about that is that a lot of people who are pro-life, who are not necessarily active in the pro-life, this is real in, in the movement, they're actually feeling spurred to action because of this film, which is, is always great. Um, that's always really exciting. But I mean, I wake up pretty much almost every day to messages, emails from people saying, I walked into your film solidly pro-choice. I walked out pro-life. And, you know, that's why we did it. We believe that conversion is possible. We think that conversion happens when the truth is exposed. And um, it's it's really been amazing just to, you know, I mean, I'm a pretty ordinary gal. So just to tell this story, um, really a, a story of faith and a story of redemption, um, it does really resonate with people, I think. Now, you spent about eight years working for Planned Parenthood, rising up through the ranks to become a clinic director. Did you fully believe at that time that you were helping women? I did. And um, especially, you know, in the I would say in the first six years, um, I felt very proud of my work at Planned Parenthood. I believed that we were doing the right thing. I believed that we were helping women. Um, it really wasn't until the last couple of years that I started seeing something change. And I, I wasn't sure if it was that the organization was changing or if it was just that now I was so high up in management, I was actually seeing what we had been about all along. And I, I realize now I believe it, it to be the latter. Um, but yeah, I mean, nobody gets involved working in abortion, you know, or working at, a, at, at an abortion clinic saying, oh, I'm just really excited that we're going to be doing abortions. I mean, the goal, I think, for everyone is to help women. I mean, and that's We've all had those experiences where we, we have compassion for others, but maybe it's misguided. Now, you're the mother of eight children. Did you have any kids at the time when you were working for Planned Parenthood? I had one. Uh, my daughter, uh, who's 12, I had her. But um, no, we have, <laughs> our family has expanded very rapidly uh, since I've left Planned Parenthood in the past 10 years. Now, your job was more administrative, but one day you were asked to help assist with an abortion on a 13-week-old fetus. What happened in there that really changed your life and changed your mind? Well, ultrasound, uh, ultrasounds are not primarily used during the abortion procedure. So 
the the standard protocol for an abortion is that it be performed without the use of an ultrasound. So it's sort of a blind procedure. The physician doesn't actually see what's taking place in the womb during the abortion. But this physician uh, who was there visiting decided that he wanted to show us what this type of different abortion procedure looked like. He said it was safer for the patient if the doctor could actually see what he's doing while he was performing surgery. That made sense. Um, I was asked to come in and assist. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I'm a therapist uh, by education. But, uh, you know, when you work inside of a, a facility, an abortion facility, we're, we're all just expected to sort of pitch in, hands in whenever um, assistance is needed. And so I was called in. I was asked to hold the ultrasound probe on the woman's abdomen during the abortion. And, you know, I had never seen anything like that before. I'd never seen an abortion take place on an ultrasound. And I saw this 13-week-old unborn child fight and struggle for his life against the abortion instruments. And I knew then that what was taking place inside the womb, um, that it was, it was destroying a, an individual human life. And I knew that if that were true, that... I, I could no longer participate in, in abortion anymore, and so I ended up leaving. So, Abby, a recent story in the Texas Monthly has a reporter alleging that your story doesn't add up. The story says the Planned Parenthood has no record of a 13-week-old fetus being aborted on that date, and there are claims that you were offered money to come over to the pro-life side. What's your side of the story here? Uh, man, I wish I would have been offered money to become pro-life. That would have been awesome. Uh, no, I, I took a complete leap of faith. My, I made a lot of money at Planned Parenthood. My husband was a teacher, uh, so he didn't make a lot of money. And uh, it, was, it was scary, you know, to, to leave my job. I was never promised any financial compensation or that would have been fantastic. But that, that didn't happen. Um, you know, I actually wrote a response. That article came out about uh, about nine years ago, and I wrote a response recently to that article. Um, you know, they are this guy, this reporter contacted Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood gave him a spreadsheet uh, full of of numbers on it, and uh, you cannot give medical records to a reporter. <laughs> You cannot give um, the reporting form that has to go to the state. You can't give that to a reporter. So this is simply a, a he said, she said sort of thing. There's nothing uh, official to show that an abortion at that gestational age was not performed that day. Of course, Planned Parenthood needs to say that I'm lying um, because if I'm telling the truth, then they're having to admit that what I saw on the abortion screen was the deliberate death of an innocent human being. And that is a lot to swallow. And so it's much easier to simply call me a liar. When a woman comes in for an abortion, they're not really thinking, I want to end the life of my child. I would guess that maybe they've been told that the fetus is just tissue. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we told people, you know, women would come in, they would ask, is, you know, is my baby going to feel pain? Is my baby going to feel anything during the abortion? We would tell them, oh, no, absolutely not. It's just pregnancy tissue. It's nothing to worry about. It's a nothing. It's a blob. Um, and, you know, women are looking to their healthcare provider for honest information. But the honest information would be something that would cause these women to turn and make possibly a, a decision for life. And that's bad for business when your business is abortion. I mean, abortion, it's a little different in the United States and Canada, um, but you know, abortion in the United States is primarily privately funded. So we don't have um, government funded health care that pays for abortion, but it's extremely lucrative. And, uh, and so they have abortion quotas, a certain number of abortions they have to sell to women. And it's extremely profitable for these facilities. You know, I would think most of us would assume that the abortion doctor goes in, sits down with a woman, goes over the risks, the alternatives, and the benefits of abortion, like you were just saying. From your experience, how often does that really happen? Is it all the time? Never, 
No, it never happens. Um, I, I sort of laugh whenever I hear pro-choicers say that abortion should be a decision made between a woman and her doctor, because there's never a time where a woman goes and sits in with a physician and he goes over the risks, benefits, and alternatives to abortion. That's true informed consent. And that's something that the abortion industry is not interested in. Because when you present the truth to these women, most of the time, they will not choose abortion. And, you know, these women are are choosing abortion because they feel like they have no other choice. The whole idea of being pro-choice in itself is a lie. Um, Nobody's walking into abortion clinics saying, man, I'm so excited to exercise my right to choose today. They feel desperate. They feel like they have no other options. It's a moment of weakness in their life. And our goal as as human beings, not just as pro-lifers, but our goal should be to truly empower women to build them up, to show them the resources that are available to them, and to tell them that they are strong enough to be a mother to their child. Should it be maybe more about education and counseling for a lot of these young mothers? Absolutely. And support. I mean, we need practical resources for these women. We need mentorship programs. These women need to know that when they choose life for their child, they will be supported that they're not going to have to worry about how to put food on the table, that they're not going to have to worry about if they have health care during their pregnancy, that they will be provided for and that, you know, their babies will have clean diapers (laughs) when they need them and things like that. And and that's something that we can help provide in the pro-life movement. And we do that through pro-life pregnancy centers. Abby, what kind of pressure is there really on today's medical community not to speak inconvenient truth about abortion? Well, it's it's uh, pretty heavy pressure. I mean, a lot of the physicians that have been abortion providers in the past, they leave and they feel like they have to be anonymous because if not, you're essentially a pariah in your medical community. Um, being pro-life is, it, you know, as a, as a physician is um, not the popular stance to take because everybody thinks that, well, Everybody in the medical community is pro-choice, but that's simply not true. And we need more pro-life physicians taking a stand and speaking out publicly. Planned Parenthood recently ousted their president, Dr. Liana Wen. Wen says it was over philosophical differences. She was only in the position for about eight months. Your thoughts on that? You know, I thought it was interesting when they hired Dr. Wen because they've always had activists as presidents. And I thought, well, that's a bold move to have a doctor come in. I mean, it lends them credibility for all of this supposed health care they provide. But I thought, you know, she's a doctor and she's going to get in there. And I think those colored glasses are going to come off. She's going to see what type of health care is actually being provided in these clinics. She's going to see that Planned Parenthood is really just an abortion factory. They are trying to push abortion as much as possible, and they don't care about the cost, even at the cost of the safety and health of women. And I thought, you know, as a physician, she's going to have a certain standard of care that she expects. And it looks like um, she did find some of some problems there. And um, I think yesterday on Twitter, when when Dr. Wynn posted about their secret meeting, that Planned Parenthood had, I think we saw a very angry Dr. Wynn. I think that we saw a, a, a woman who had been b- betrayed by an organization that she truly believed in. And I hope that she will continue to speak out about some of the things that she witnessed inside Planned Parenthood. Abby, can you share with our viewers for just a moment here, do abortion clinics sometimes offer hush money to clients who've had medical complications just to keep them from maybe sharing their stories? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the abortion industry is in the business of settlements. So they settle with patients. We, I can tell you dozens of stories of women who were negatively impacted physically by abortion procedures, perforating their uterus, leaving parts of the baby inside of their body where they become septic. And we would just give them a check for a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, and uh, have them sign a non-disclosure agreement and send them on their way. And, you know, when you're dealing with a a population of women who many times are impoverished, um, when you throw money at them, they're willing to take just about anything. And, And not to mention the shame 
that surrounds these women who choose abortion. Moving forward with some sort of lawsuit would mean that they have to sit in front of a court and talk about their own abortion experience. And so many times women will just simply take the money. You know, most of us don't spend a lot of time pondering how many lives have been lost through abortion over the years, but I'm told the numbers are quite staggering, millions upon millions of babies. How many abortions have taken place in the United States? And is it true that statistically, the most dangerous place for a child to be is in the womb? That's true. Um, over 60 million recorded abortions uh, have taken place since Roe v. Wade in 1973. We know that there were abortions taking place in the late 60s in the United States um, that were not recorded. We also know that there are many unreported abortions that take place in California, states like New York, where abortion numbers are not required to be reported. So we know, we know that the number is even higher than 60 million. Um, the abortion rate in the United States is about one in four women who have abortions before the age of 45, uh, not very different than Canada, actually. Um, so, I mean, this is a, a tragedy of, of huge proportions uh, in both of our countries worldwide. And it's, you know, it's not just an issue for Christians or conservatives. This is truly a human rights violation. And this is something for all of us to, to speak out against. Do you believe that it's a strong possibility for abortion to be made illegal once again in both Canada and the United States? Well, I think that we are seeing a time in the United States where um, Roe versus Wade is, is potentially going to be overturned. That would then turn it back to the states and the states would have the authority to vote on whether abortion is legal or not in their state. Um, about half of the United States are predicted to ban abortion if Roe v. Wade was overturned. So I think we are seeing some cultural changes in the United States that are bringing about legislative changes. Um, you know, I think abortion has been pretty much the status quo in, in Canada for many, many years. And I'm hoping that um, by releasing the film Unplanned, that, that it's going to stir up some dialogue and some conversation and um, help people understand that this doesn't have to be settled uh, in, in law. This doesn't have to be simply settled and done with and over with. That, you know, Canadians have a right, pro-life Canadians, Christians have a right to stand up for the unborn and they have a right to use their voice. Yeah, Unplanned has stirred up a lot of controversy and a lot of support here in Canada as well in the United States. Abby Johnson, former Planned Parenthood Clinic Director, now a pro-life advocate with eight kids. Thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you so much.